We all have dark souls, right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we can't deny that it's just frustrating as those games are, you can't deny that they're worth like beating through just for like everything that they have to offer in gameplay and graphics, just the lore, all that good stuff. And I have Mr. Dave Mi Dave Dupotle himself, Mr. Alex Mitchell. In disguise as Alex Mitchell, uh, you know, I'm not gonna wear you know, I'm not gonna be Dave Dupotle because I don't wanna get I don't want, you know, people to know my location, but you know, I'll, I'll pretend I'm another guy okay. for now. Understandable. So we're gonna have a little interview here just to talk about his recent experience with the recent uh, installment, Dark Souls 3. But I guess it would make sense to ask, like, if anyone should click on this video and be like, what the fuck is this? Just generally, like, just tell us briefly, like, your experience with the, the Soul series in general, like, how oh, do you I find, like, started. the previous games, yeah. Uh, well, I played the original Dark Souls, like, I've heard about it. I've heard rumors that it was hard. But actually, the first one I heard about before this, like, I was in that little area, that gray area that says Dark Souls, Demon Souls. Yeah. And so I looked at Demon Souls, and like, what's this all about? And the reviews were, like, I mean, critically acclaimed. You could look them up. They're, they're really high off the charts. Like, Dark Souls was a little lower than that. And I was like, then why would you pick Dark Souls? <laughs> so I played Demon Souls, and oh my god, it was, in my opinion to this day, it is the hardest um, Souls game, even Bloodborne past all that. Because the way it just, like, it's kind of started the whole trend of, you know, die, rinse and repeat, and get nowhere, maybe two feet away. And I remember getting, like, to the Armored Spider, and by God, I've heard horrible things. Like, on the top list, that's near the top. And I don't know how I beat it. I, I looked up, like, a way to, 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 to spam it, and that was the only technique I had, and I barely even beat it. And it was one of those games where it was just, oh my God, it was way too hard. And I took Dark Souls, it was like, mm, it's, it's more approachable. But that doesn't mean just because it's more approachable. It's probably one of those more approachable people that just stabs you as soon as you meet them. It's like, oh, hi. And they just start killing you. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, I kind of got around to that when I heard about hardest games ever and most difficult challenges. And I'm all about difficult challenges. Um, you know, like Super Meat Boy or, you know, um, like Ninja Guy or anything oh, like yeah. that. I'm, I'm all for it. So that's kind of how I got around to hear about it. So, like, and you... You also told me like Demon Souls was like harder than that before, right? Oh and, yeah, oh, oh yeah. God. And then um, Dark Souls, in your opinion, was just like I just breeze through that. I, I didn't know what you said. No, 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 no. No, I did not breeze that. No. Um, in fact, uh, I kind of hit. I'm um, just like most games. I hit a wall, and I. Oh really? It was one of those walls where I just couldn't break it. Oh, I mean, okay. it, it, I mean, I mean, like wall as in like um, you know, like way too difficult. Uh, it's a piece of shit game, yeah. or there's just something about about it that stopped me from playing it completely. Yeah. Like another example, without being too difficult, exactly. is Final Fantasy VIII. I hit a point where I was sick and tired of the main female character. I hated her so much, and I, I like I, Squall was getting better, and the other woman, whatever her name is, I completely I forgot. Quentin her name. or something. Quentin. Quintus. Quintus. That's, that's right. right. And my friend Matt would have been very upset with me. Um, she was an awesome character from the start, so I had no problem with that. But there were some characters like Zack was annoying and stuff like that. But it was primarily her that I just could not stand. She was like in love with the bad guy that Squall like literally got the scar from. And she's like, I love him so much, maybe he's so bad, I love him so much. And so I was like, bitch, please, I'm done. I literally quit because this is like drama in life I have to deal with. Like people that say, he's not that bad. He only does drugs, he's only a criminal. So yeah, he's bad now. He's, there's no worth keeping up with him. But for Dark Souls, yeah, I hit a wall pretty hard, and I, it was one of those bosses where I couldn't beat. And considering where I, at its evolution, like Demon Souls and Dark Souls, it was more simple. And because it was more simple, um, there was no mechanics to help you out whatsoever. So it was you in the game, and so I did not get very far in Dark Souls. I got, I think, like halfway. Um, my achievements don't say that, but my PlayStation trophies say that. Um, <laughs> well, uh, and uh, in Dark Souls 2, that's the only one I kind of breeze through. I'm just going to skip ahead to that one since we're in this category. Sure. Um, in Dark Souls 2 wise, um, I've beaten like the first couple bosses. The only one I had trouble on was the, I think it was the three Sentinels or something like that. The one where it's the three at a time and they're, they're oh, one. Oh, those two. kind of bosses. Those kind of bosses. Ooh. And then uh, I kind of stopped playing only because you know I had other games I had to play, and so um, I kind of just stopped. But then my friend's like, you know, he had you know he was near the end of the game. And I was like, hey, do, you, do you mind do you mind if I come over there and beat it real quick? And so I come over there and beat like the last five or six bosses. And it wasn't yeah. hard, and his builds were just pretty much like mine, uh, more strength, uh, kind of you know stamina, keeping him up. And so 
I technically beat Dark Souls 2, but I'm still not gonna hold the trophy above my head. And so, and Bloodborne, that's the only one either one I did beat. Okay, so, there you go. That's, that's, that's my question about Bloodborne, at least I was gonna ask about that. Anyway, like, so like, you've had all these experiences with these games, and then we get the news that, like, there's a third installment of the Dark Souls games, and like, we, ha we have like, the original, like, creator back now up again, was that correct? So like, just news like that, and like, you know, getting updates with screenshots and just what to expect in the game like until at least they just like what were you what were your initial thoughts like expecting it initially the game? actually I never wanted to buy the game um, really? I refused to buy the wow. game because I knew what was gonna happen um you know I have you know I don't, I don't know if I can find it right now but I had Dark Souls on PlayStation Xbox and I have it also downloaded on the PSN as awesome. well um I have Demon Souls downloaded and I have two copies of uh, Dark Souls 2 of the Dark Souls that came out for the um, PS3 and the Scholar of the First Sin for the Xbox One. Oh, nice. Um, but actually, I never wanted to buy Dark Souls 3 because I was concerned that I would never beat it. And I said to myself, I was like, well, no. you, if PewDiePie, if PewDiePie's having tr trouble, yeah. there's no way now I'm not going to do this. There's, there should be no reason I should do this. And I was like, I, I guess I'm at that point in my life where I was like, I got to do it. You know, no, there's no reason not to do it or not not to do it. And so I was like, okay, well, I mean, let's try. I mean, I looked up some screenshots. It looked good as it normally yeah. should. Um, and they said the bosses, they said there's phases, I'm like, phases? And they said, yeah, yeah, it's like Bloodborne, it's like, as soon as you, know, oh, you beat yeah. up half the phase, and then something changes and they make it difficult, I'm like, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I mean, oh, I like that no. because it's interesting and cool and memorable, but it's also great. It's more reasons for me to fail, thanks a lot. And boy, that comes into play later when we get to that. Oh, um, sure. And so I, I never wanted to buy it because I'm never a fan of buying, you know, games I know I know I can't beat. Um, like, I only the reason, game I bought, um, technically at full price, because I was born in a time where I passed over Dark Souls and Demon Souls because I was still in high school or something I was so focused on. Right. And those are games that I would, I would not dedicate myself to. And uh, so I missed, that's another reason why I didn't get through Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2 um, and stuff like that because they passed over me because Dark Souls 2 was like on a different console at the time. Yeah. I still had an Xbox One and I was playing that. And it came with Scholar for Sin and I bought it at full price and I didn't get very far because I already beaten parts of Dark Souls 2 at my friend's house so I kind of called it quits there. Um, um, but. Um, I'm not saying I was disappointed when they reviewed it. In fact, it looked great, um, yeah. and it looked fun, and I like the areas I shown was really good. But I get I, I was still in the mentality of like I'm, I'm not gonna beat it anyway, so I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> and literally, if I fast forward like maybe <laughs> months later, I was like, you yeah, beat it. good job. <laughs> I exactly. I, I probably, if I thought back today as one back then, I would have definitely bought it hands down. And I did actually buy it on the day it came out. Oh yeah. I don't know what literally if I got punched in the face. But someone must have told me to hate spy. It's gonna be good. I'm like, all right, fine. And we go. I can't be wrong there. I enjoyed my time. Oh yeah, there you go. So. Like, but you know, initially I, I didn't want anything to do with it. But I don't know what happened. Honestly. I yeah. So you finally got yourself to like buying the game, and let's just say, around the first hour of the gameplay, like you say, like if it was the first boss, or you reached like Fire Link Shrine, or anything like that. Was the game like really like bringing out your expectations like for the better or? Uh, definitely for the better. Mm -hmm. Great question, by the way. Um, uh, well, when I first got to the first box, Ludix uh, Gundor, um, I knew this game was not gonna hold your hand. Because no. um, <laughs> I was like, the first phase wasn't hard, and the cool thing is, some of the bosses in this game you can start hitting right away before the the, the boss fight actually starts, and that counts as damage. Yeah. That's what was nice. But that became very unnice when I realized you have to master rolling and you also need to master when to attack. Because yeah. in this game, I think this game more clearly, you cannot attack multiple times without getting messed up and hurt very badly. Um, and come and face my top 10 bosses later, all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Um, but uh, when I, as soon as I beat Ludix, um, like after like the fourth time it was a little hard at first because that second phase is pretty hard um at a, such a low level yeah um like when you take on those kind of enemies in the game later on you have fire it becomes so much easier but with just a sword it's pretty hard and so when i got that guy in the fire lake shrine i was like wow this is actually really pretty and kind of cool oh yeah and once i realized that you could bring people into your fire lake shrine as like mbu who can recruit people into yeah. your shit and they become like permanent residents there and you can talk to them and you can, you know, learn toss and all these other things. So I was like, that's actually really cool. Yeah, I'm really gonna helpful. be like Pokemon, you gotta catch them all, let's go. Nice. And so right the expectation of Rose, I was like, oh well, screw, it. let's just go to the next area. I didn't stop. Um, and that was a good sign because if I don't stop at a video game, that means it must be good. It means something did something right. 
Oh, of course, yeah. But I don't know what it did right more than, you know, like when Demon Souls, you, you're you in that area with the woman in black, or whatever her name is, that has no eyes, or when you show up in Dark Souls, uh, when you first die, when all that other jazz, or Bloodborne, you're first in the Hunter's Dream. Yeah. Um, but it, it had the very same feeling, but also a very, like, nice, better feeling. I can't describe it. It's, I guess to me, it reacted differently to how other people, people say, this is kind of cool. For me, it was like, yeah, it's just too much to say. Can't it's too much to say. I was like, what? I can recruit people? What? You, you, you crazy? What? There's Five Thrones? What? There's one guy there right now? I only got four. I gotta go. One down. Yeah. Right. And so I, I guess I guess something just kicked me. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's just yeah, do it. Just keep going just on. Keep going. Yeah, but don't worry. Was... I hit some roadblocks coming up. But oh, yeah. Real, real, okay, let me say not roadblock, but let me okay. say falling off a cliff and have to climb the mountain to get back oh, to square one. Oh no, that must be tough. So like, pretty much the world of Lorik is like at your oyster at this point. So, was there like just one location or even a couple that just stick to your mind? Oh yeah, even oh, after playing. Oh, oh god, yes. Um, I'll say these locations are really cool. Oh, yeah. and the thing I've always hated about uh, Dark Souls. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, that's what I loved about Bloodborne. Bloodborne visually was appealing and everything looked yeah. so cool. It's like a horror thing and it was creepy oh, and stuff. It, it, it was sick and it was very. Very um, uh, Victorian like, and I oh, love yes. that about Absolutely. I love that about Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. And so in Dark Souls, now don't get me wrong, I love the Dark Ages and all those mythical shit. And yeah. It's really cool. You kind of see them running trends, castle walls, uh, tall open buildings and corridors, and dragons flying by in a tower as you're trying oh, to yeah. shoot at them. And, you know, it, it's all running themes here. And so it started out just like that in Dark Souls. Uh, you start in the cemetery. I've seen that a couple times. You know, every start. Dark Souls, yeah. and uh, you get to a castle, and I was like, eh, it's not sticking to me, but it is a really cool, well-designed location. You got beams you can walk on to get stuff, you got hallways, dragon bringing fire on you, it's cool. And then you get to stuff like the uh, the swamp, and you get to the smoldering lake, and then you get to uh, the Grand Archives, which I love. And I think the best place in this game that literally was like, Holy shit, this looks awesome. I would live here. I'd buy a place here, even if it's falling apart. Nice. It was Arch Dragon Peak. Oh, I nice. love this place. And it's a shame because it's actually shorter than I thought. You have armor of like people who were once soldiers there lined up. You have stone like stone, you know, pallets built on top of each other that are rocks you can knock down. Just listen to the sounds and they fall off into the cliff. You got dragon architecture, you got gargles, you got everything going from here. You got guys that stick their head out and shake their head like giraffes and bite your face off. And it is, it's sunny. It's the sunny, oh, yeah. it's like there's clear blue sky and the sun, and it's just that perfect like Grand Canyon slash Arizona place you go out into those mountains. And it was so cool. I was like, I wanna live here. <laughs> Screw this, I just wanna live here. Oh, yeah. And you know, you got certain castles that run straight forward across to, yeah, um, <laughs> and you got, uh, you got giant bell towers that ring constantly. And then when the storm comes in, it just changes everything. It comes, not sunny at all. It's raining. There's fog at your feet. It's crazy, and to oh, me, yeah. that is just the best one. And uh, you know, there's good places like the Undead Settlement. That yeah. looks cool because people are getting there's like hung people in cages. They're just locked their bodies away. And you get those weird guys in like pompous hats, and they light themselves on fire with a giant stick that just kills okay. you. It's cool. I, I I think Arch Dragon Peak. Honestly, I could take a picture, put that as my wallpaper, and I'd be satisfied. There you go. Yeah. So those kinds of locations look visually stunning. In terms of like NSP characters or just bosses in general, were there any in the game that just like you just want to know more about, whether it be for the tragic reasons or they were just like seemed really really enjoyable as a character? Uh, y yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the Firekeeper. Um, she's kind of cool. Oh, yeah? And, uh, you know, I always wonder, like, you know, that mask she wears. I honestly don't know why she wears it. You know, I'm not, I'm not very good on the lore as it is. But I know there was another lady in the game that I got way late than I should have. <laughs> really? um, it was, like, one of the starting locations that I missed her. That's the best part about that game. And I had to go back and look for people that I missed. Oh, yeah. And, uh, she tried to be a Firekeeper but failed. And the guy that watches over her, my favorite part, is that he says she failed. She's a failure. She's not worth my time. Time. And as soon as you know, you take her to take care of her, and she so she gives you miracles and dark miracles, but you don't want to do dark miracles because you lose her. And the reason this is because the guy watches over her. That says oh, she's worthless. He actually still watches over her despite literally leaving. Yeah. And uh, another duo I liked is the um, Blue Sentinels. There was this chick, and this other guy does this big. He just grunts. 
And, you yeah, know, and she does the talking for them. And constantly throughout the story and quest line, if you follow it, is that they, they go from location to location. You see them all the time. And one time, sadly, like, she loses her partner. Like, he's, she doesn't know where he's at. Wow. And supposedly he's somewhere in Smoldering Lake or some crap. I don't, I don't know exactly where. But you actually supposed to go find him, and supposedly he dies. Oh, wow. And you had the option to tell her that or to not tell her at all. Oh, no. And each leads down a different path, and, yeah. and one of them can make her hostile. I was like, oh, wow. okay, crazy. Amazing. And another character I wanted to know more of that I liked also that is a boss. Okay. And I only had a very short time with because, well, he's easy. Um, was Osiris the Consumed King. Mm -hmm. He was the only one that actually talked during a boss fight, like every two minutes. Um, and he was like holding like what he what he thought was his baby, trying to take it, and then he eventually just loses his baby. He's like, I I I, I feel starting out sorry for him. He has no oh, eyes. Yeah. His eyeball sockets are missing. Jeez. That's how kind of creepy. That Great is. boss, guys. Um, you take a picture of his eyes. Oh my god. Oh wow. Um, but it's kind of sad the way he talks. Like it's like it, I'm only doing it because I need to move on. I need to go through this area so I can get the Arch Dragon Peak. The problem is he you know, he's just in my way, and it's not something I want to hit him because he looks. I feel bad for him probably because he's probably consumed by greed or power and yeah. turn him crazy. And you know, eventually when he just loses it entirely, it's like he just gives up all all together, and he's like, "All right, screw it, this guy's nothing but trouble." And then eventually I kill him. And it's kind of sad because you know the whole fight, like I can't even see his health bar. I can just see him talking, and I'm focused on the talking and me kicking his ass. It's one reason why he's so easy. Is that if it's that easy, the point you can listen to him talk and beat him, that's yeah. just pretty easy. But. I feel kind of bad for him, you know. I, I don't know whether or not it's true he had children. Right? I'm not entirely you sure. You never know. I, know I, I don't know, but the way he acted, it's like he lost everything. And so I felt kind of sympathy for him. So, yeah. I mean, out of all characters, he was all... Uh, mm -hmm. No, he, he definitely takes my sympathy role and probably my favorite character-wise. Uh, okay. um, and then you got, like, the witch and the, um, you know, she's, she's like, you know, she kind of hates everybody and she knows she's done bad and she wants to do good. And you convince her she's going to need your services. And she's okay. like, oh, okay, then thank you so much. And then uh, I'm trying to remember the other guy that he dies guaranteed and nothing oh. he can do. He can level you up for free, but he turns you more hollow if you do that. Um, oh, really? He's kind of sad because he's literally like, he's all those people that travel like in the trailer. You see those guys with the sticks and walking around the balls in their back or whatever. Oh, wow. He, with a, like a thousand others, traveled across the world to look for the Ashen or some shit like that. And you find him be amongst the dead of all his brothers and sisters. Whoa. And you, you said, whoa, Jesus, I'm so sorry. And he ends up dying later. I was like, damn it. Oh, Watch gosh. him. He's like, be safe. I shouldn't run. I was like, oh, thanks. Oh. Uh, and then. And then he just died, yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. I think there's a reason. Like, he died specifically through the game. Of course. Generally, there are a bunch of classes that you can start from the start of the game, and that way you can develop your own. So, in your experience, say your playthrough through Dark Souls 3, like, which class would you personally recommend to anyone, like, starting new, or if they're, like, like you, just returning from the other games. Just like the other games I've always picked, I've always picked something that's very similar. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly, I, I, I am okay with change, but when it comes to certain things, I like certain things done a different way. I like it hands-on experience, I like it be mano mi mano. So yeah. when I go to mano mi mano mi mano, it's, it's always a night. I've always picked a night, I've oh, never yeah. picked anything else. And uh, the reason for this is, um, I feel like most of the bosses, especially like people said they had trouble with the fort of the Rio Valley. And I say, not really. If you get like me two feet from him and attack him and then just keep at him, there's not much you can do. And that's why I had a theory with most of these bosses is that they don't like it when you're too close to them and you smack the shit out of them. Yeah. Or if it's the Chris Rotten Tree, don't get close at all, get far. Um, um, but in the case of my thing, I, was like, I feel like you should always have good life and good stamina at all costs. Because if you don't, there's a lot of these bosses that will drain your stamina in one hit or something like that. Whoa. In fact, uh, one of my prime issues with Nameless King is even with the shield I had to get on top of that worked really hard to get. Yeah. He, every hit he did, my stamina bar would go nearly to the end. And he, in fact, one attack, he would do this raising attack that would shock you with lightning. If you blocked it, it took out all but like maybe like a tenth of your stamina. Nice. And there's also a lot, like most, a lot of bosses use ice abilities that 
you know, you get frostbitten. There's like one guy that's a frost knight, he crawls and it's a sword. He's nothing but ice, so you're gonna get frostbitten, your energy, your stamina doesn't raise at that rate, and it sucks. And the worst thing you want is not delivering the final hit, because in this game, I can guarantee, the enemies are harder than they've ever been. They are, they, are, they adjust to your every move, they usually have really good mix-ups, and usually, they, if you don't follow up with good attacks, they can hurt you pretty bad, and you won't have enough energy to get away, and they'll usually kill you. Wow. And the, most of the mini bosses prove the same thing. They, uh, they're they pretty heavy hitting. <laughs> and if you're not in, one of them was like this alligator wolf thing, and I never actually beat it because I, it was in the, uh, it was when you first enter the um, the refuel valley, mm -hmm. is he would chase me. I was like, Oh, screw you, I'm going through the portal and you can't stop me. And then I met him a second time at the sewers. I was like, you can't touch me. I'm going down to the bottom sewers. And so I never fought him. And because this guy was fast, oh, he bites hard. And I was like, yeah. he says, use fire. Thanks. No. Thanks. No, no, thanks, really. Like and so, there really is no hope fighting that thing. Yeah, if you want, honestly, you want uh, like strategy, honestly. I think the best strategy, honestly, is to have good stamina and good life. For life, you know, in the sense, I think you can go without a good amount of life. You can still last as long as you have great stamina. Because if you have great stamina, you can block, you can dodge, you can do everything and stay alive. Oh, yeah. But without great stamina, if you're building a build out that's focusing on keeping your distance, then um, it's going to be a little harder because you're busy focusing on hitting your target and not focusing on where you stand stamina wise or how to get away or how to mix up. But when you're a soldier like me, you just, you just take the hits. Because you get enough Estus flasks, flasks and a lot of upgrades to keep your, mm -hmm. your drink at full power. Yeah. And eventually, for me, I got comfortable with the point I could keep my shield up and be like a gladiator and just or like a, like a Spartan. I felt like a Spartan in the last couple of fights because I had this big ass shield oh, and yeah. a small ass sword. But I was going for an endurance, keeping alive, and just when I drank, I drank even when there's moments of attack, I just drank instead oh, because right. it's all about staying alive. And so having good life and stamina. Results in a very happy experience because you're like, it's like when you fail, it's because you made just a simple mistake. Of course. Alright, <coughs> we kind of touched upon this earlier, like, similarities with Bloodborne, like how the bosses have phases now. And ironically, since, like, this game uses the same engine that Bloodborne uses, so, like, did you see, like, any more similarities that transferred over from Bloodborne to this game, or um, was it all relatively uh, the same? Uh, in the same of, like, how it feels and plays except for like the trick weapons um, yeah I the one thing that 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 Dark Souls 3 does is the thing called weapon arts and yeah. it's basically what you do is you put your hand in two hands and then you plus left trigger or right trigger and does something different um, but certain ones like for example like an axe if you have an axe it's like a war cry and basically it increases your damage or something like that or if you have the butcher's knife which is a really cool weapon um, mm -hmm. it increases your uh, health regeneration the butcher knife has a, uh, a passive health regeneration as you hit people you get health Oh. And the more heavier attack you do, the more health you get. But if you use the the uh, the sharpen, he'll sharpen the blade. He you you get more health on both attacks now. Yeah, wow. And it's, it's it's a pretty OP weapon at the start. Um, I wish I got it earlier, but I was you know, the the person I, I had to, the person I had to face to get that was at the bottom of a hill next to a cliff. I was like, I don't want to go down I'm there. You. <laughs> and so um. I mean, I guess, I think it's trying to imitate Bloodborne in a sense, like kind of follow that trend, but I also wanted to be Dark Souls. And so I feel like it's more Dark Souls than Bloodborne, but it does borrow some things. Like, obviously it doesn't borrow that health regeneration thing from Bloodborne, where if you can hit people, get your life back, which is kind of cool. But in this one, it, in Dark Souls fashion, um, it's, if you get hit, there's no way you're getting a life back. You need to drink up. That's it. And uh -huh. in Bloodborne, it's more friendly if you're more aggressive. In Dark Souls, I feel like in this one, I can't tell if it's trying to be more aggressive or more passive. Like, I feel like in Dark Souls 1 and Demo 2, being passive was good. Just backing up and waiting for an opportunity was great. But in this game, especially Champion Gundor, you can't be passive anymore. You have to be aggressive. But it's a, it's like a conservative aggressive. Like, you, when do you attack or when do you heal? Or when yeah. do you back away and when is it the perfect time to go in for a strike? You have to memorize patterns, and with the any boss, with the, the, just the enemies in general, there's some big ass enemies in this game that are like. Whoa. It's not like the big ass swing guys from Bloodborne or something like that. These guys are like big and all types of what the hell. They don't mess around. <laughs> um, and they're difficult. And usually they'll team up with other people. Like there's one I hated the most. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what they were. Um, shit, I just lost them. I'll, 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 I'll remember. I'll remember down the road. Yeah. Um, like my most hated enemies. Um, but uh, I remember 
you know, is reacting to every enemy at the same time. And if you if you make a mistake and you end up with a bunch of other enemies and they come after you, and they basically says you're kind of done. And it's like yeah, no. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do. And there's a lots of parts with mini bosses that aren't bosses, but just enemies that come in threes or maybe twos. And so having um, you know, and being more passive aggressive. So yeah, I, it's like a weird blend between Bloodborne and Dark Souls. It's not conservative and it's not passive. Uh, it's not it's not aggressive and it's not going for the kill. So what do you do? You kind of meet your middle ground. So it's like Bloodborne, but it's also very much Dark Souls because nice, it's like nice. block, block, and then go, 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 back up, back up, back up, back up, heal, yeah. drink, drink, drink. And in Bloodborne, it's like kill, be aggressive, come on, keep on the attack, yeah. be powerful, no dodge shit. when you need to dodge, mm -hmm. don't mess up. In Dark Souls three, it's like you, you got to know, boy, you, you need mm -hmm. to know this stuff. You you need to take a test every two minutes. I'm not a fan of tests. <laughs> no, can't so. anyone is. All right, these next two questions I have are kind of back to back, kind of similar in the theme. So the first of these questions <laughs> I've asked is like, what was the worst moment that you experienced in Dark Souls Freeze, and how did you overcome it? Uh, Whether it be losing souls or just you couldn't fight, like take down the specific boss. When you mean by worst, um. What do you mean by worst? Do you mean like just like this thing I hated, or something that was like a roadblock, like beyond all something like that? Just anything like that? Just like if you overcame it, just like how you managed all right, to do that? Well I remember a couple of roadblocks. Um, all right, you can just just one, just like the one that really got you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I don't want to use a boss for this because that's cheap. It's like okay. too easy. If that's the case, it definitely be the name was King for Oh series. yeah, for sure. He's yeah, just, yeah. he's not weak to anything. You can't fuck up. You got to be perfect. Yeah. And the thought, in fact, I almost lost Adam at like the last two percent of his health. Oh, and so I was like, stop it. Just say record that every two minutes, and I'll send yeah. you a that video. I said, just, just take your fucking. Son of a bitch. I had like six asses, five slots. It's like just drink to your life's content. Don't attack until you're ready to kill the fucker. And he kept jumping up. I couldn't hit him, and I was like, oh, I hate this. But uh, I remember there was an area specifically. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, the Grand Archives was pretty hard. There was a lot. They had this weird system where, like, there was these um, handmaidens, uh, or uh, like uh, these. Uh, they had wax on their face, and they had concept art. You can look up concept, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, <coughs> honestly, when I saw concept art about those characters on like uh, a, a website for gaming, that was like, one of the initial things you know we talked about earlier about um, what brought you into this game or, or what. Um, did you what were your thoughts leading up to its release? I saw a picture of her and she looked cool. She was like just a woman holding a dagger with a candle top and wax going all the way down. I was like, I hope this character makes it into the game. Because that looks cute. That looks cool. And for the whole game, I was like, where is she? I honestly I would, I would quit the game if I just see her. That's pretty cool. And I got to the end of the game. It's like it's like the fight before the Prince of Lothar. Oh jeez. And um um, and so, um, when I got there, they actually existed, I was like, cool! And, but there was a reason why they have wax on their face. There are these books all around the Grand Archives <laughs> that have these hands that come out and attack you oh, and curse God. you and curse you at the same time. And they're all over the place, like they're in lines and rows and you get multi-hit and you get staggered really quickly. Oh, shit. But the reason why they have wax on their face is you can dip your head mechanically wise into the wax and you can walk freely through the cursed hands without them hurting oh, you. God. And so I was like, there's only like three of those spots, and you have to know where they are. You have to know like pathways leading up to that. You can't, you know, cut corners because it has a certain amount of time before it runs out. You need to keep your head in wax again. And so I thought that plot was really cool, but it was really hard because leading after that is yeah. three NPC fighters at the same time. Oh god. One that was a non-stop shooting soul streams and arrows at you. One was as the dual wielding katanas. The other guy was that the huge blade guy that swung around and got health regeneration on your head. At the same oh, time. And god. I tried using like the bow and arrow to shoot one and lure them in. They all come at the same time. Oh wow, that does sound pretty And not nice. to mention, on the top of that building was all gargoyles. All gargoyles with flaming swords and spears that attack from above, and they come in threes at times. Oh, and after that, when you get to the Prince of Lothar area, woo! Okay, before the area up there, I actually was managed to do this on my second time. Okay. But there is like it's it's like Demon Souls. It reminds me of Demon Souls so much because there's that those wooden barricades that sit up with arrows on them, and they break through it and come out and attack you. Stop moving from them. Um, and um, what was worse about that though is as soon as I beat all those guys, there's like at least. 12 of those bastards. And when I beat them, I was like, all right, let's just run out there in epic fashion and take on this little bitch. And as soon as I did that, I see this 
tall night guy walk out. I was like, what? And I was like, all right. And then I see two more behind him. And then I see another one. There's four tall night guys that are like NPC guys. Oh, God. I was like, you're shitting me. No, no, no. I just did that. And that was literally right before that area. The only difference is you can take an elevator to go up and skip all that yeah, shit. Yeah. And I was like, come on, man. I'm spent. And so first time I died. Second time, I lost six... Estus flags beating these fuckers. These are the guys that would cast spells on their blades, like that had like a mine uh, explosion thing that would drop mini explosions that would stagger you, and then you'd come in for an attack. Oh, God. And then there's a guy with a spear that was made of lightning, and that's when it didn't have the lightning shield yet. And he would do that lift up, and he would strike you in. Then these guys had a guy that would heal other people, and they all had their own flasks and shit. And when I beat them all, like after losing all the Estus flags, I was like. Oh, when you got up to the very top, you could put down an elevator. That when I did that, I was like, yes. In fact, I just went down to the bottom and just restarted our bonfire. I went back up. As soon as I went back up, they don't. They continue to respawn. Oh god. And they will sit there for a while. You have to let them pass. I literally, like, most of them, will spend doing this. And this is literally two feet away from the Prince of Lothar room. I was like, no. <laughs> All right, no. Don't get stuck on a wall. Just go. And I would just run in there. Now knowing that was the, I didn't know it was the boss room. Now I just ran in there every time when they're there. Just, Gosh. <laughs> and they were just, it was frustrating. And he's better than this. It is, yeah. And another thing I want to bring up too that I also put on Royal Block constantly, constantly, just trying to get to the next area, was the um, there was this uh, guy that would summon. Uh, this is an Arch Dragon pick. He would summon an NPC on the highest level. This guy, I'm talking dual wielding, would take all your stamina in one hit. Mm -hmm. Every time. And he would follow up. And if you struck him, he would strike you back with lightning attacks and shit. It was annoying. And the worst part about it is if you didn't kill the other guy first, that would summon him, summon another one. Oh, God. And this guy would follow me. Like, I ran around him because I didn't want to deal with him because he takes like multiple SS flags. I can't hit him without getting hit once. He's guaranteed to take at least a couple SS flags or kill you. Uh, when I'm fighting all the other enemies, yeah, he oh. ran, he followed me, he ran me, and then he killed, he knocked me off. Oh God! He didn't give up, and that was another frustrating one. It was a lot smaller than obviously the Prince of Lothar one, but Ooh. and I, I swear to God, I recall an area being harder than that. I'm I'm trying to go through. I'm trying to picture in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go through my memory, my memory glands. Um, yeah. Well, the undead summon was hard. It was annoying at a low level because you got those guys that torch the cells on fire and hug you because they do non-stop spells at you and then they have good sweet swipes and that area goes on forever and that's like the area before the tree so but i honestly think that i think the prince of blocks like area outside was pretty tough oh, and that's also where you fight three winged golden knights with three weapons no, my sure. only strategy was to lure one at a time and i managed oh, no, to beat them luckily but oh boy Oh yeah, and I guess following up from that experience, what would you consider like your personal greatest achievement in the game, and really? Beating the Nameless King, there's no reason I could talk about that, I mean, just... Yeah, you just skip it for when you talk about Honestly, the Honestly, when, when people say it's the hardest boss and he's ranked already in like, top Dark Souls and Bloodborne bosses, that's pretty something to say, that's pretty fucking hard. And nice. he was just the guy that literally nothing worked on him. The, the, dra the, the dragon at first was like, weak against fire and shit, and that was easy, but when you got to him, it was like, how much damage do I do at one point? 129, I have my thing maxed oh. up, to, I have my sword maxed up to plus 10, and it does 129, and then the soft part goes, eh, eh. I was like, oh, you're I, fucking with Yeah. Me. No, there's, there's no way. I literally said to my brother, my brother walked in, I was like, there's there's no way. I literally like, it's, I got, from, there's bosses where I get the controller and I would throw it at the couch, <laughs> and I would, like, lightly so I don't break it, because I don't want to buy another one. No. Um, there's a wall over there, but that would definitely break it. So I was like, what, what can I throw this that won't break it? And I will just go, couch! <laughs> And I'm like, fuck. Or most of time I slam it on the ground, it takes out the batteries. Mm -hmm. But for the Nameless King, I just, this is this is me, you know, for me getting defeated. Like, when I literally had to call it quits for a little bit, I was like, there's just, there's just no way. No way. I was like, I'd sit back, I just, there's no way I can do oh, this. Wow. It's, it's over. And uh, I think beating the game is second, but I think when I look back at it, and like, hey, the Nameless King took me way too many tries. And I don't, well, in a sense, I only got a 15 point achievement, and it ain't worth it, but I think obviously when you look back at it, oh, that's yeah. that's the last guy I had to beat before I took on the final boss. And I already had the final boss ready to go, but I was oh, like, yeah. there's no, I'm not beating this game until I beat it. I'm beating oh, every yeah. boss. And I literally had two, two achievements left, just beat the final boss and beat him. 
And uh, yeah. of course those other achievements out there are impossible to get. But Achievement hunter. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I got the Nameless King, uh, my heart sank pretty hard. Um, I knew there's there's no going back. And he was way harder than Soul oh, yeah. Cinder. Um, but I'll get to him later. Yes. But given the fact if you ever do New Game Plus, then there's less stuff to do. Really. Yeah. I feel like... Oh, I'll get to that later. Get yeah, to that's later. fine. Just generally for the last question, really, like... Given your experiences up to this point, like, if they ever made another Souls game, where would it be Dark Souls 4 or a sequel to Bloodborne, I, just I, anything? I, like I can dream, but, uh, you know, I've yeah, I heard the, hard rumors that they're not going to do it, and I think that's a good idea. But. Oh, I know, but, like, should they ever change their mind and announce anything else, like, would you consider going in that game? The Dark just, Souls 4 or Bloodborne 2? Just any, any yeah. game similar to that, just... Yeah. I think right. Not like, you know, I played Lords of Fall and stuff like that. Other games have played a similar role and, and they're not as satisfying. Um, and so I would definitely do it. Um, yeah. I, it. It has to give me a reason to and I have to look at back, back at where I am. Like right now, I got not much to do. And so when I started playing this game, like games were coming, the Overwatch came out. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, you had a, all these other games were coming out, Hitman and stuff like that. And get out of here, you fool. And so, um, you know, I honestly didn't want to beat Dark Souls 3, go away. And um, I'm about to get on that, this is going to And, um, you know, I didn't want to beat it because I like I knew it was going to be frustrating. I'm going to rip my hair out. It's going to be like 40 plus hours before I beat this fucker. I'm just not going to kill you, I swear. No, and, um, you're fine. <laughs> and so I literally was in agony when I was getting here. Like, once I got to, I think, the Ancient Werewolf, that was another area I should have brought up. Uh, yeah. When you fight the ancient Werewin guy as the dragon, and none of this is always a dragon per Dark Souls game, beating him is easy. I already told you how you beat him. You just run to the top of where his head is, and you drop down, you punch him in the head, and you rip out his brain. Yeah. Kills him one hit. But getting to that area is amongst the most frustrating thing ever. Mm -hmm. Because it's nonstop guys that are heavy hitters that take you out in one hit he, while he breathes, breathes fire at you. But with guys that shoot from afar with uh, magic and arrows and shit, it ain't fun. <laughs> it was very annoying. In fact, I died most of the time just getting to the top of the dragon's head than actually fighting the dragon. Uh, and I never actually fought the dragon. I just jumped on his head and punched him. There you go. Um, but uh, when it comes to playing another game, and I would have to go through it again, it depends on where I'm at at the point. Like, for now, since yeah. I had nothing to do, and since I was like, I need at least to say I have beaten the Souls game, truly, from the start to the finish. Yeah. I've beaten Bloodborne. I'm not going to count. I mean, it is a Souls game, but I don't... No. It was a lot easier than I thought I was going to be, but it was... Sure, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it was easier. It was definitely... Uh, was easy, definitely was uh, definitely yeah. harder than Dark Souls 2. But, um... I felt like I had to beat a Dark Souls game, or at least the Demon Souls. Hell, I almost like, reinstalled it just to beat it, but then I realized... Oh, Armored, I looked at Armored Spider, I remembered, I was like... You know what? No, 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 I can't do that one. So let's do Dark Souls or something. And then that, people say Dark Souls 3 is hard. I'm like, is it hard? And everyone says, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, fuck. And so I got into it, and boy, <laughs> it's very, very fucking hard. Oh, and yeah. so I would definitely do it again. Um, for now, I definitely don't want to touch a Souls game for a long time. No, um, Obviously, since it's not coming back for a while, ever, that's a good reason to not touch another Souls game so I'm good. Maybe I'll go back and beat Dark Souls 1 or 2 from the start finish. Maybe I might do that in the future. Yeah. But I'm open for it, but not now. No, I, I want to wait. I want to see where I'm at. I want to see if I have the time to do it because I feel like this game is a game that has to be played constantly. You can't, you know, play it and then stop playing for a week and then come back to it because you're just going to reason why you left. You're going to know yeah. why you stop playing and then you throw your controller across the room. Uh -huh. And so I had a day where it took like a day or two off and played something else. Like Overwatch, I'd be like, yay. And I'd be like, and I look back, uh, you know, my console's like, oh, I still gotta beat it. And the game's like, come on, Alex, come on. You're, You're doing like, so well. Come on, Alex, just have your, you have your mouth touch. Push it to the limit. You know that one? Like, yeah. All right. All right, and yeah. So, and so, yeah, I'm, I I would do it. You know, All right, yeah. In so, the future. Of course. So, yeah, thank you, Alex, for uh, answering these questions oh, here. Oh, no problem. And I can't wait for the next part where it's like. Yeah, that. so we'll just cut to that. These are Alex's top 10 hardest bosses in Dark Souls 3. Shit. Top 10 hardest Dark Souls 3's bosses. And it's not particularly, um, you know, it could be in my experiences. I'm going to use my experiences, obviously, as a majority yeah. here. But I'm also going to use something I consider why would be hard. Or I didn't have as much frustrating as some other people did. Like, I know some people probably, probably, like, you know, maybe, like, 
shave their body whole and probably like took off their clothes and probably cried themselves in like a puddle of water. But um, you know, for someone like me, you know, I, I didn't do that. I just had to call it quits sometimes. So I'm gonna put consideration of their reasons why it's hard. I'm gonna say why it's hard and why they're here. So number ten, I'm gonna start with is the cursed rotten tree. Sam has actually seen me beat this guy with uh, Jacob here. As, as oh well. yeah. I'm um, the reason why he's saying he's hard is it's not more or less he's hard. It's everything else that's hard about it. Getting to him was hard. Getting to the shortcut to him was hard. And fighting everyone but him was hard. When you start the fought boss fight, is he stuck away in a corner every time? He he doesn't. He, it's not like you enter the fog and he's there. He actually will start every time in the corner. And uh, well, at first, you know, this gives you an advantage. Like once I realized you could run to his right arm, he played like a Resident Evil boss where you had to hit certain weak points that hurt him. Like you couldn't hurt him anywhere else because he's a fucking tree. Yeah. But you could hurt him like at certain spots, and that would take out his life bar. And I think you need to break at least two things: one on his arm and one on his like elbow, on two different spots. The reason why this part was hard is because he has enemies that keep spawning in nonstop. In fact, the strategy, if you want to take him on, is kill all most of my, most of the enemies as much as you can um, as soon as the match starts. So, like, lure him out, kill him, and then run in there and start slashing at his elbow when he turns around. Because when he turns around, his elbow comes in, and you can slash it and it'll break really easily. But then enemies start piling in, and these are the enemies you like. You back up, you wait for them to strike, and then you attack. And that makes it hard when you have a guy, a tree, that's stomping the shit out of you and trying to kill you. And it's very frustrating. And so when you get to the second phase, he falls to the ground and he rips out his tree vagina, or whatever yeah. you want to call it, and pulls out a third arm. And this arm is the only spot you can hit him to hurt him. And I didn't realize this at first, but um, when I was playing, when, I was, when you guys were watching, mm -hmm. I got close as much as possible. And he would do this, or I got, at first I got close and then I got really far. I kept far, I thought this is the ideal strategy. No, don't do that because if you stay far, he'll do charge attacks all yeah. the time. In fact, I had to do it work three times in a row and I could dodge it every time. But eventually I had to make a mistake. So get like, not too far, but close enough where his hand could reach you so yeah. that he will lift himself up and fall down on you and you just dodge it and slash away. Yeah, that's the only way He himself do it. is not hard. He's very slow and easily dodgeable. He's just annoying. Yeah, just a troll of yeah. So, all right. Number nine. Number nine. Let's go look back at my thing real quick. Okay. You suck. All right, number nine, the old Demon King. This guy is in Smoldering Lake. Uh, he's basically, think fire. Mm -hmm. Just think fire. He's like a lot of the demons in the game you face. They look very similar. They're kind of big, kind of fat, and they carry like a club. And he has the same thing. He carries a club, he's fat, and he, except he's on fire. Um, the reason why this guy is hard is this guy hits pretty fucking hard. He's very slow and very readable, and you can get behind him by just walking around and slashing his ass cheeks a couple times. But he's hard because he hits like a, like a truck. <clears throat> and the thing I hate the most is, well, with fire comes bigger fires. He uses fires in the second phase like nobody, nobody's other. And if you're not careful, like he'll slam down the thing and create a fire pillar that doesn't stop. Or he'll create fire things that just follow you or he'd shoot like fire waves at you. And these attacks will stagger you and usually fall up with another attack that kills you. And I, all every time I made a mistake of constantly getting burnt and then getting losing all my stamina and not having enough to run away or be safe. So this guy is punishable easily because you can hit him very easily, but also you're just as punishable in the second phase because he has nothing but fire for his magic show. <laughs> so number seven, number eight. All right, number eight. Yeah. So my thing's written down nine eight seven because I removed ten. Number eight, ignore that last one. All right, number eight. Now for me, this one wasn't hard. A lot of people put this near the top of the list and it's the Dancer of the Burial Valley. Like when Sam said to me, good luck at the Dancer. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I've heard awful things about her. And um, my experience with her was a little different. We had, we had a dance off and it was epic. And uh, she's actually one of my favorite bosses in the game because she is literally unreadable, she has a great design, and she is deadly when she wants to be. And she had one attack that I will say, stay the hell away from. When I first met her, um, you know, my first strategy was try not to read her because you can't. Um, you can't read her. She just walks around. I don't know when she's going to attack. I don't know if she's just going to stay there. I had no idea what she's going to do. And so I just ran in there and started attacking her as hard as I can. I had uh, fire works really well, so if you have like the flame mark on your sword or anything like that, just attack quick. You want quick attacks. You don't you don't want heavy attacks because she's unreadable. She's really quick. She's a light on her feet. 
And uh, I was able to dodge some of her attacks. She had like huge swinging arches, and I was somehow able to dodge them because I'm, I'm a pro or something like that. And so after slashing her bit, I actually got her down halfway really quickly, and then she pulled out two swords. Now this is where it gets interesting. I kept attacking. I almost killed her in my first attempt. Um, got her down to like her last, I think, I'm gonna go with last like eighth of her health. Mm -hmm. And she does this thing. This thing I didn't like. <laughs> um, and it's the second most least, least thing I liked about it. There's one thing else, I'll get to that in a minute. Is she spins her swords around in a big arc like a tornado and you can't block it, you can't dodge it. And so if you get caught in that, you're dead. And that's just what happened to me. I was doing really good and all of a sudden she does the spin attack. And boy, I see that you're dead screen. <laughs> I didn't even know what happened. Whoa. And so avoid that. When you get to the second phase, be more conservative. Wait for her to attack. You know, I know it's hard to read her, but you gotta wait because if she catches you in that bond, she's gonna mess you up. But attack heftily, she is very low poise. You can attack her a lot, knock her down, do that. But the thing you gotta look out for is her hand grab. Oh my god. When I had the first contact with this hand, she basically broke my spinal cord, broke, ripped out my organs, and wanted to devour me in two pieces. She just actually just squeezed you. But it takes out almost your entire health bar. And I only survived because I had full health when she did it. And she, it's, it's you, I'm telling you, that hand is a lie. You do not know where that hand is. If she even touches fingertips with you, she's got you. And if you're behind her, she's still got you. So if you see that hand, just pray that you don't keep her out. Alright. Number, Number seven. seven. Whoa. What? Alright. Aldrig, the or Aldrich, whatever you want to pronounce it, Devourer of Gods. When I got to Bitch. this, <laughs> this guy's kind of quad. Um, I don't want to say this guy was super hard, but this guy had some huge things you had to watch out for, and there was not just one; there was at least three you had to watch out for. He um, he doesn't seem threatening at first. He's just got a bunch of solar arrows that will mostly can miss you if you're running at him or dodging him. They're not hard to dodge. Yeah. And but then, then when you get when you get close and you start hitting him with fire, you know, that's what you want is fire, and you don't want to hit his body, you want to hit behind his body, because that's where you attack him. <laughs> and then um he had a lot of soul stream huge solar as you shoot at you. You want to dodge those because usually those come in twos and threes. But then it gets worse. It gets really worse. Um there's this one attack. <laughs> um I'm not a fan of. <sighs> Alright, so what he will do is he'll pause for one second. This is when you're about medium to far range. So get close to him, run at him. Do not give him distance. That's the least thing you want to do. And he will teleport like the Crystal Sage. Um, he sticks the arrow up in the sky and he lets go. And let me tell you something. If you've ever seen the movie 300, you know what I'm talking about. Arrows just start careening down towards you. In the first phase, it goes on kind of like a straight line and it'll follow you a little bit, then it'll stop. But it's pretty long, and if you get caught in it, it circles. And it does a lot of damage. But that's not the thing you should be concerned about, it's the second version. <laughs> when he shoots in the second version, it follows you forever. I've ran out my stamina bar and still didn't run out on it. It will follow you nonstop, and it's pretty fast. You want to cut corners, you want to dodge. But that's all while this is happening. He's shooting arrows at you. He's shooting this, the mini soul arrows at you. He's maybe doing a swipe, maybe using fire. Oh my god, it's so annoying. And when you dodge it, you're like, thank you, thank you, Lord Almighty. And then you just go in there and attack him again. But when he does that, I guarantee if you fuck up once, you're done. And so for that reason, I'm putting him this high, uh, kind of high up on the list. I yeah. mean, he's not the hardest because you can just rush at him, but. If you don't, you know, focus, he's gonna kick your ass. Alright, also I did put the Crystal Sage on there, what the fuck am I thinking? Alright, well... Oh, God! Anyways. Uh, uh, honorable mention, Crystal Sage. <laughs> Might okay. as well, you know. Um, annoying, frustrating, but one tactic you can easily do to, to overcome a strategy, this, this travesty, yeah. is he hates being attacked, melee-wise. If you're a sorcerer, I am so sorry. <laughs> or pyromancy, I am so sorry. But when you attack him, he... Just takes it like a man and or a woman. I, I can't tell if it's a woman or a man. It's one of the two. But they just take it. And so when the second phase hits is when shit gets annoying. Is he shoots these ice balls that take out more than half your health. Um, he has lots of soul arrows he shoots at you. And he has clones of himself that do the same shit as he does. Non-stop. Well. And uh, they have one health though. So my strategy is bring a friend or go kill the clones off one at a time, take a drink, and then go for the guy. He's not that hard to beat, and usually he only does that twice and you're done. So, honorable mention done. I just want to bring that yeah, one up. Yeah, now number He's six. A piece of shit. Now <laughs> number six. 
Abyss Watchers. Oh, now look, I, I'm, I don't crack well under pressure. I like mono me mono neck and neck battles, but when I have to take on a boss that literally calls in a friend, that's not fair. That's not cool. Calling in a friend is just, it sucks because his attacks are long reaching, hard hitting, and follow ups are, are after as soon as he strikes you once. He's like, he just reminded me of uh, what's his, uh, Father Gregor or whatever, not the first guy from like the end guy in Bloodborne, but the guy you faced before that, like one of the earlier bosses. Uh, Father Gaston? Yes. He's a piece of shit. He follows you. He has everything going for him. He has lunges. He does whatever the hell he wants. And then he calls on his friend, and they do the same thing. And trying to outrun him. My best strategy, if you want to get far in this guy, run. <laughs> Hit him a lot in the first time. Get as much health as you can down. Then run. And there's a good reason for this. Because there's another Abyss Watch that comes up with a third one. Yay. That actually helps you. He will attack the clone and that guy. And also, if the clone dies, the clone gets back up later. Like, okay. a minute or two later. But the other guy will help you deplete, deplete the other guy's life bar. And it has to go all the way down before he gets to the second phase. He's one of those guys that have two life bars, basically. Oh, shit. Not fair. Not fun. Not cool. So that sucks. Yeah. And so, his second phase is, is so annoying. Once you win the first phase, it's it becomes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. The second phase. Yeah, fuck you. This is like Soul of Cinder shit. He lights the sword on fire, and he has... I mean, he could swing the sword horizontal and it reaches you. It doesn't matter. You're going to take it. Your stamina bar is going to drop and he's just going to beat the shit out of you. I honestly have nothing for it except don't fuck up, dodge when necessary, and strike when necessary. And this is where the start of the strike ones run the hell away. Mm -hmm. Heal. That's the, see, he started with this boss and great. He had to start so early. And you just had to do it. It's one of those bosses where you just had to buckle down read his movements and don't mess up. And the other guys don't help either. It's just him. It's you mono we mono like it should have been. Except he has fire. Great. Cool. That's fun. <laughs> Alright, so we're at number five. five. Yes sir. One, two, three. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Champion Gundor. Alright, look, let me tell you something. I met Ludix Gundor and he left a good impression. He was pretty hard, uh, he was cool and he was fun. So then I say, why not fight a version that's like him? Except more annoying. <laughs> okay, let me tell you something. This guy is in the unattended grave, and let me tell you something. I'm trying, I'm trying to be brave here. <laughs> this is the most aggressive guy I've ever seen in my life. This guy does not stop. This is the kind of guy you shoot in the legs, and he still keeps coming. Like, this is the guy that's missing all his limbs, and he comes. This is like the Black Knight of, 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 of uh, freaking, uh, what's his name? Uh, Monty Python. This guy does not stop. He, 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 if he gets cut, He's coming at you still. This guy had every mix-up going for him. He has the same attacks as the uh, original one, but a different attack. This is his greatest attack, a bat kick. That's all it is. So if you get behind him, he turns around and he just kicks you right in the face. Jeez. And the best part about that is he follows it up with another attack in the second phase. And then he can follow that one up if he wants to. This guy will not stop at anything. If you have no stamina, my point of stamina, you can't run. You can't block because he he beats you up with the blocking, um, and he has this other attack where he sweeps his sword, like his axe or thing, grabs you, and he throws you across the map. And most of the time, he aims to the cliff. Good strategy because I've fallen off that cliff at least five times. Oh God. Now let me tell you, I honestly want to place this guy really high, but I realized that he has one weakness. Mm -hmm. He does not like this weakness. You can roll. Yeah. Every attack you, he throws it, you can literally roll into it. Like, you could roll into the blade that looks like it's piercing you, but it doesn't count. So, every attack is rollable, but don't roll behind him because he'll just do a quick kick and kick you in the face and then beat the crap out of you as soon as you're done. You can't walk away and heal because he immediately jumps and attacks. He then follows it up with a lift attack and then he follows it with a ground pad. He has everything going. This is guy has no openings. Uh, okay, maybe he has one, unlike someone else I'm about to get to. But for him, He's a dick. I don't like him. He's not right. a friend. Number four. I didn't put it on here again. Wow. All right, I'll do a duel. Since there, I can't, it's hard to do ten, because I realize there's one guy I'm missing that caused me trouble. That almost started this whole thing. Oh god. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a duel of this one. <laughs> no, I'll do a duel on number three. So it's number four. Yes. Uh, I put this one on here because everyone said this was difficult for them. Mm -hmm. Um. Prince of Wadrick. Oh, God. People say this one's really hard, and I know why. 
but for me, I didn't have a struggle because I was a really aggressive. I was that passive aggressive going. This was a late game. I was ready. I was like going at it hard. But here's why it's hard. First phase. This guy's pretty tough. He's got huge hits and they're pretty painful. And he has this ground pound that I swear to God. The only way to dodge that ground pound is it's like a beam that comes at you and it'll take one and a half to your health bar and he'll teleport and kill you. Is as soon as it hits the ground, be pretty far away. As soon as it hits the ground, dodge will left to right. That's the only way you can dodge it. That's my bit of info. Um, but he has lots of teleporting techs where he'll come in for a swing and just teleport and he'll be behind you. Just turn around, block on him and block or go around him. And then, um, then it gets worse. Once you beat that face, this is where it gets unfair. Is they team up. They become brothers again. Oh he, god. He will revive that guy every time if his health drops. And this, they have this thing I told Sam, it's called the one two. It, this is like the ultimate knockout punch. Is they'll do, um, they'll do like the slam, and then immediately as soon as you get launched away, they'll, the, the brother will shoot a soul arrow at you, maybe once or twice. And that will kill you because if all those connect, you're dead, you're done. And lots of teleporting, lots of little magic soul arrows coming out to hit you. But honestly, the worst part is, um, is downing that guy and letting his brother revive him to half health. You do not want that. Your game will end if you have low S is uh, still S is still enough, because this guy does not give you a break. He's not as aggressive as Champion Gundor, but boy, he is a piece of shit. I hate him. And uh, you know the strategy for him is circle around this boss and attack from behind because you can hit the the, the guy with the sword and his little brother on the back at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as you knock down the bigger brother. The little brother falls off and he's gonna revive him. Now you gotta be quick. You got about two to three seconds. You gotta strike the crap out of the little brother. I got lucky. I struck the shit out of him. I beat him with sticks and stones. I threw lava on him. I freaking <laughs> threw his ass in the fire. I called his parents. They grounded him. They took away his electronics. Then I threw him in his room with no electronics. And then I played soccer with him, kicked him in the face, and then I told him he was a bad kid. And then I killed him. And oh, uh, descriptive. Yeah, I know. I hated that guy. And uh, luckily, I got lucky. His health bar was really low, so I was able to kill him. But if you don't kill him within two to three seconds, he has this um, healing attack that when he revives his brother, legitly, an explosion happens and knocks you back and does a good amount of damage. Don't let him do that. That's not cool. So I'm called there for that one. Yeah. So a tie on number three. He was right? a duel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I have to. You know, I had an honorable mention, so I'm going to go duel. And these are duel for two different reasons. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with, I want to say that there's one that's higher up than, you know, three, but I was like 2.5. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the uh, first one, Dragon Slayer Armor for tag for number three. I like this fight. This is actually probably my second favorite fight in the entire game. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is it's very fun. Um, the Dragon Slayer is very powerful, and he is a force to be reckoned with. But so is this piece of shit firing fucking dragon or butterfly whatever fire butterfly whatever the hell it's called oh, no. it starts off great um, because um, you know it's just him he looks like a Spartan just like me he's got a big shield I've been up stealing that later. and a sword that's all electric and will hurt you and he has lots of ground pounds that use lots of electricity but this guy had openings but the problem with that is he also had a lot of things that made you get knocked off there was this bridge you fought on a bridge and this bridge was small with all breakable barriers so he could throw your ass off every time and i had that happen plenty of times but the first way it starts out easy because you know it's just his uh his axe that is electric but then it gets to his second phase his shield's electric and this the shield becomes the worst your worst nightmare he uh, shoves it in your face three times in a row and if he does it's gonna hurt and it's gonna knock you off the map and you're dead but the thing that makes this fight worse and just so much more difficult, and honestly I think it's the most unnecessary thing, is there's this fire butterfly. Like oh, a dear. majestic butterfly made of fire, and it doesn't want to be your friend. In fact, it wants to spew fire at you while you're fighting the boss, and you can't do nothing about it. He shoots pillars of fire, he shoots little tidbits of fire that knock you down and stagger you, and he can be hit by the dragon slayer at the same time. He doesn't dodge or anything. He doesn't jump out of the way of the dragon, he just accepts it too. And so, that's not fun. It's not fun being fought against the environment while you're taking on a boss that wants to beat your shit. <laughs> so, for that reason, I'm putting on it this high. Because together, they are just a nuisance. The other three guy, and this is the guy that started the whole thing. Oh, yeah? Pontiff Sylvan. Oh, shit. Let me tell you. Never in, in this game. This started the never have I ever seen a boss thing. Okay? This guy, I... 
I don't know what his problem was. He must really hate people because <laughs> he must not like Dark Souls because he's probably sick of gamers. He's like, I'm sick and tired of these gamers beating these games. Well, screw you guys. Well, let me tell you, this guy had no openings. His openings were just about as evident as, you know, finding, uh, trying to match someone that's been in a completely different country to a crime that happened in Florida. Okay? You're never going to match anything up, okay? It's never going to work. Let me tell you, this guy... Oh, two swords is too much. He's that kind of guy that would swing, turn around, and swing again. And as soon as you turn around to turn around that swing, he swings with both swords. It's not cool. So when you realize how fucking stupid that is, and you realize that he has his weakness, is kind of hard to figure out. Once you got first that phase, the second phase starts. <laughs> he calls his brother. His brother's name is Tom. Tom shows up. And he's a clone of his other brother, and they do the exact same attacks. A giant beam attack, a giant stab attack, a giant jump in the air and just, just stab you in the back attack. And they both do it in sync. And that's not fun. And I've died literally at the last, like, maybe, like, 2% of his health. And I literally cried. I was like, oh, oh my god, I'm done. I, I, I'm gonna break things. And I died, he, I think I died to him the second most, maybe. Because trying to stab him and just cut him once. I, I, I couldn't do it. it. It's literally the most patient game ever. Like, I was literally like, I, I yelled and screamed. I was like, yeah, yeah. My parents, were, my dad was laughing his ass off because I was like, the house was shaking. So, Whoa. But I hate that guy. All right, number two. We're on the oh, home stretch. Yeah. 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 We know who these number two are. Oh, yeah. Just list off to number two then. Soul Ascender. And this oh, is one man. of my favorite fights of any boss. And in, in this game, it's my favorite boss fight. And out of all boss fights and games I've played, he might be number one. Another one is General Ram, but who cares? Um, for Soul Cinder, like, I'll agree with Cat Icarus. The gameplay is substantial. <laughs> this guy literally is like everything you ever were. He's a cleric, he's a pyromancy, he's, he's a, a guy that uses long spears, halberds, swords, fire, and he looks badass doing it. This is the guy that switches things like out of nowhere. Like you fight him, it's like he has a sword on fire. Ooh. And then all of a sudden he has a spear. Then he has fire attacks. And then all of a sudden he has a sorcery that he shoots nothing but solar arrows at you. And then what he has next? Two katanas that he does backflips. This guy's like 10 feet tall or like 20 feet tall. He's doing backflips and shit. I'm like giving him high claps as he passes me by and kicks my ass. He spews poison at you. And then it gets to a second phase. Whoa. This shit gets intense. Every attack he has is enhanced, it's on fire, and he has different mix-ups. For example, he can use his sorcery to call down lightning strikes that happen by the 20s, or it's nothing but lightning, or it's like a giant lightning bolt that just comes at you and takes up half the screen. Good thing I have that shield because I can block it. Um, then he has um, he has lots of different, this fire attack that I do not like. Um, this is the only thing I didn't like about him, is he would do this, he would stick the sword up, he would charge, and he would spin around like a dancer and just flail and flail and you can't block it. You will literally run out of health uh, or run out of stamina and he'll just kick you. And uh, that's what I like though. He does a little kick where you'd go, <laughs> you would just do like this, he would like this. <laughs> and then he would follow up with another attack and it was funny to watch because this guy was all out. He was like, he was like, he's like that guy you know at theater school that goes all out in his roles. He, he's dedicated. This is the most, he is the most dedicated actor you'll ever see. He puts everyone to shame. Wow. And so, um, you know, watching him do all this at the same time and shit is really cool. And he did have this one other attack that I hate. And if you want to actually beat him, you have to dodge this or you're done. It hurts. No, he does because he follows it up. As he'll do this grab. It's like this and he grabs. He grabs you and he combusts you across the map. And then he jumps down and strikes you and kills you. And there's not much you can do. There's not much do dodging you can do because it usually, in the second phase, he has fire and it spreads and it just kills you. That's not fun. But I love that fight. I had so much fun. Meanwhile, the lawnmower happens. Um, and uh, that was just the best fight, hands down. It was so cool. And literally getting back into it wasn't like, God damn it, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I'm done, I'm done. It's more like, I can do this. This is so much fun. And I almost beat him the first try, too. And he can even heal himself, too. He has these miracles that heal himself. He'll sit down and heal himself or enhance his abilities. This guy literally was like you, but in the future. And he's, like, grown buff. He worked out. He lived weights. He met a girl named uh, named uh, Trisha. They got married. Had a kid. And then, unfortunately, his wife and his son left him or whatever. <laughs> and then uh, he's left alone. So he learned to practice ninjutsu. And then he learned to kick. And then he learned to deal with fire. That's soul cinder for you. This guy's just like a god. He was really cool. And then, 
Number one. All right. Well, let me tell you something. Yeah, we know who it is. So, would you like to go in more detail? Why? <laughs> the name Just why? The name was King. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. I've never fought a boss in my life that tested me more than the new King has. You know, I've heard of some pretty hard bosses in Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, and stuff like that, and Bloodborne. But, boy, um. I don't think you should be called Nameless King. I think you should be called Fat King. Fat <laughs> King, yeah. Nameless King is like sounds insulting. I mean, I, his lore is basically he like betrayed his father and joined the dragons or some shit. But let me tell you, that dragon, whew, not friendly because most of the time it's not the dragon you're worried about. It's the Nameless King riding him because most of his attacks reach down and strike you, and they would knock you down and hurt you really hard. But then when you figure out how to beat the dragon, the dragon has low poise. You stab in the plane, you go, you stab it, and it's not hard to beat. And then you get to him. Let me tell you, I've never seen a boss just walk out of like mist and fog that looks so badass with a sword that's about to fucking kill me. Cause see, it's like the music is like, oh no, oh, god damn it. I think it's no, it's more like, oh shit, yeah. you're fucked. And you know, you can't walk on. He mostly starts out the battle most of the time with like this sweeping wave attack that he doesn't usually choose. He does a long pillar one that you have to dodge and a long wave one that you can block, but it does some damage. And then you get to him. Let me tell you something. Most of the time, as you just walking around him, just doing this, he just turns with you and looks at you, and you don't want to attack because he's that boss you can only attack once per time. Because if you attack, he's just going to immediately attack you. Um, all his attacks are electric based, so you better get that resilience because you're going to you're, you're taking damage nonstop. If you want to dodge, that's fine. It's just most of his attacks are follow up. He's just going to whack you as soon as you return. So dodging is out of the question. So you just gotta take it. Like this is the guy you just gotta take the abuse. And I had that shield, and thank God the, sh the the Dragon Slayer armored shield. Don't get his weapon. Get the shield. The shield has a 95% resistance to lightning. Hint, hint. Maybe there's something to do with the guy that rides dragons that uses nothing but lightning attacks. Hint, hint. Use that. This guy. I, ugh, God, I don't know what to say about him. It's just he's a piece of shit, and I hate him. He. When you feel like you're doing damage in reality. You're He's just, he, it's like you're just trimming his toenail. He's like, stop that. It's, you're doing nothing to him. You're just throwing air at him. You're just, you're just making him annoyed. And so, when you get to his second phase, shit just goes downhill. He has more electric charge attacks. He has ground pounds that, that have shock waves, so you gotta be careful that. He'll slam it down and do a lot of electricity, and if you're not careful when you're attacking him, he'll electricity come up from the same spot and attack you as well. And that's not cool. And what's not cool is uh, he has this, this, this thunder strike from the sky. He will charge his blade. It's very obvious. Don't attack him. Don't. Because you need to be prepared for that lightning strike. As soon as your stamina is full, block that strike because it will take all your stamina out, but you usually get like a second to breathe. But then there's these other attacks he has. This is one where he kind of charges his lightning strike and he'll stab you, lift you up in the sky, and he'll shock you. And then he'll fall up with another attack. That has gotten me killed every time. I don't know how to survive it. So this guy is one of those guys that does a slide past you and immediately turns around and attacks you again. And the way he hits, those strikes he has are just unforgivable. He just he's the kind of guy that you know in college that he that has done legendary shit and has done shit. And you know, you say the you know, he's gone through like like he's like served in the military, he served as an officer, he served the FBI, and this guy's in the CIA, and he's probably the guy that buries people in your backyard and you won't even know and you don't even question you just you just accept it and that's this guy he just accept it and the only way to beat this guy is just to fucking do it There's, you may have resistant shit but I guarantee I've died plenty with that shit on uh, I thought it was golden when I had all that shit I was very wrong and uh, I, I he's got to be my top 10 hours boss of all time he's fucking dick and I don't like him and that But I literally like I I, I I didn't scream and cheer. I was like I was I was sad, somber, and quiet. Yeah. I literally just put my controller down and uh, I I used one of those taunts that lakes you die on the ground and I just got called it quits there. Yeah. Oh, great game. Frustrating. Needs lots of dedication. If it's not kind of game for you, I understand. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it. Kind of sad, like I said before. Um, but you know, hey, DLC comes out. Fuck, I'm game, game, you know. There's two DLCs coming out, what I've been told. So, different areas, different bosses. So, um, I'll be there, you know, beating the shit and crying. Yeah, and we'll be back to do the top five 
hard bosses from that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wait till we finish that one, so. I guess, uh, enjoy this picture. Which picture is it?